you can help me. I've had a serious accident, but I'm not in danger at the moment, although it's a matter of life or death. Andre! It's, it, it's no good calling to me or saying anything. I can't answer. I can't speak. You've got to do exactly and very carefully what I tell you. When you knock, I'll open the door. Walk over to my desk and put the milk on it. Then go into the other lap and try to find a fly. Fly. You'll be all right now. I know it's worth it! <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to part two of my Halloween build for 2015, and the subject is The Fly from the 1958 um, Vincent Price movie. Um, surprisingly, I got myself feeling pretty well and in a, in a, you know, on a roll here, and I just started going crazy with this build this this evening. It's very surprising. Usually by this time I'm two sheets to the wind out cold in bed. Um, but yeah, I just got rolling and I couldn't stop to the fact where I went a little too far. But um, what I mean by that is, um, as you can see here, I got him painted up. The bulk of him painted. He's not finished yet. But as you can see here, I painted his jacket yet. And... Um, problem is I haven't prepped his armor even <laughs> um, which is going to need to be glued painted and uh, some filler is going to be needed I didn't get there so I kind of got ahead of myself but um, I thought I'd show you guys where we are anyway and what colors we used um, we used all craft acrylics um, you know it's starting to get a little chilly outside and you can spray them inside without needing uh, the uh, the aid of a ventilation system or anything like that. It really works well because you're using distilled water, or in this case, I use um, windshield washer fluid to mix with the paints, and it's it doesn't create that smell and that toxicness in the air that the enamels usually do. So real simple. Um, <clears throat> what I was trying to go for is here, just like the character in the original movie um, and he wore dark slacks he wore unlike most of the um, horror movies and, and B movies the person in question is usually wearing like a, a white lab coat uh, in this case he wasn't wearing a white lab coat his coat was kind of tan and he had a white shirt so what I wanted to do is like um, you know when, when you scale down figures or anything you got to be careful with the colors that you choose because sometimes they're just too too stark and in this case is no difference in a figure in the movie and I don't know if I mentioned this a moment ago but the, the I was lucky enough that the version of the movie that I have is in color so I get a, a, a better reference uh, a bit of reference than I do if I'm using the black and white um, but anyway, his pants were a dark, I would assume they're really a black pant wearing a white shirt, um, again with the tan jacket. Um, I didn't want to go with stark black pants because I just, I just didn't think it would look right um, in this scale. Just It's too dark. Um, plus, I painted his shoes black or at least the first coat of his shoes. And if I went with black pants, black socks, it just kind of doesn't, um, you know, it all blends together and there's no contrast and no points of interest. So what I did is I used the uh, Ceram Coat Charcoal. Now, they're like with all different model companies, or excuse me, paint companies, they have a color called in this case charcoal but it's not always the same color because if you look over here I've got this craft acrylics uh, Anita's uh, charcoal and if you look at them both you can see one's much darker than the other 
So the Anita's charcoal is just too gray for this instance. Um, but this ceram coat was very close. It's close to black, and I think it makes it nice. And it looks, I think it looks just right in this scale. I'm very happy with the color. Um, the next thing we did was we did his shirt. And following the same logic as I did with the pants and not wanting to be so stark with the color, I didn't want to use a stark white. If you, excuse me, you know, if you go with this color white, it's just, it's too stark, you know, it doesn't look right. So what I went with was Ceramcoat's uh, buttercream. And that's what I used on a shirt. Um, now again, these are just the first coats. Okay, there's going to be some detailing hopefully later. Um, and then the next piece is his jacket, as you see here. And again, that was tan in the movie. It wasn't white, which I'm really glad because white jacket on a white shirt. It just in the end, the figure looks toyish. Now, I'm not saying my figure is not going to look toyish. I'm sure it will. But I think some of the best ways to keep it from looking that way and fighting that battle would be to use the appropriate colors and textures for scale. Now, I didn't have a tan color here. I could always go out and buy one. Um, the Hobby Lobby is in my area. They have a great selection of um, craft acrylics that I've been using. But with my schedule and things the way they are, uh, for example, today I didn't get home until 9.30. So Hobby Lobby was long closed by the time I got home. So I just went through my stuff and I found a couple different colors. And what I used for the jacket was I used the buttercream. And then I used this, um, what color is this? This is spice tan. So the majority of it spiced tan with a couple drops of the, the uh, buttercream, mixed it all together, and I came up with this color here for his jacket. And uh, that's where we are at the moment. Uh, again, I rushed myself through because I was really on a roll and I didn't want to stop. But now the reality is that I'm going to have to, um, I have to get working on the, the arm. As you can see here, let me get you in a little bit. I think we went over this before. The sleeve is all the way down to here. It's got his cuff rolled up. And then it's got all this extra resin right here. So at the sleeve cuff, this has to be cut off. Okay. This has to be prepped and everything because the uh, fly like hook is going to get attached to here. And then again attach the body but in the meantime I really got to clean this up get it prepped to go on to the bod to the arm to the jacket I'm sorry and there's probably gonna be some filler required which means this half of the body is going to have to be whoa I'm not even frame that means this half of the body is going to have to be sanded and reworked in order to get the, the blending in and then repainted Lucky for me, I had some extra. I always hate when I custom make paints that I don't have enough and I always have to go retouch and the, the next mixture I do doesn't match. <clears throat> In this case, I happen to have extra. Um, these little cups here, I picked these up at Hobby Lobby really cheap. Um, so far, out of all the different things I've picked up to store paint, these have been the best. And this container here, this is just regular flat. Uh, regular black paint uh, pre-mixed for the airbrush with uh, windshield washer fluid it's been in this container for almost two months and it's still viable I mean I used it today on his shoes and it worked great um, so that gives means that I have a little bit of time to prep him get the arm on all that happy happy stuff and I got the right mix of tan in order to reshoot the, the jacket and uh, make it look right so, let's get to work on the next steps, and I'll be right back. All right, as you can see here, we got the resin parts cleaned up in the arm, and also over here on the cloven hoof hook thing. Um, they've been trimmed up, um, used a 
a little bit of a grinding wheel to get the surfaces flat. Um, used Gorilla Super Glue in order to glue the arm to the shoulder. The surface was pretty good. It was there wasn't a lot of gaps, mo just a little bit here and in the back. Um, I used the two-part epoxy sculpt that I usually use. I've shown this before. Kneaded up a, a very tiny ball about this size here. Rolled it out like a, a, a snake, really, really thin, and put it around the edges of the, uh, the shoulder. Around here, you know, I used a little bit of water on my fingers and blended it in, smoothed it out all the way around, and got a nice joint. Now we're going to let this sit overnight and harden. Um, like I said, I already cleaned that up. Uh, the hand has been cleaned up too. A uh, little bit of gap fills and seams to take care of here, but otherwise it went pretty well. Alright, so that's uh, a little bit more sanding while I'll be done, but that's almost ready to go. Um, probably going to paint this up as it is here before I put it on, because I want to paint this separate. <clears throat> I still got some detail work to do on these parts here. I'm not sure about the buttons. I gotta. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, I can't... I gotta look and see what kind of buttons my white shirt has. Should I leave them like this or do another color? I gotta detail the belt. Um, otherwise, from the waist down, I think he's pretty much done. There's no need to pre -shade, post shade anything in here. I think it looks very well. Um, I'm probably gonna do a whitewash on the shirt though. And then it's back to this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably redo this I'm going to do add some uh, some browns or something to it to the folds some way or another um, just to give it some shading some diff some depth so it's not so uniform and then we'll uh, repaint it again see where that takes us all right so that's it for right now we'll be right back be right back All right, guys, welcome back. I'm um, doing some more work on the fly, and I'm prepping the claw, okay, the, the paw, the claw, whatever you want to call it, to get it ready to be attached to our figure. But what I found out, or found out's the right word, but what I realized is the tip here is broken off. Now, I'm not sure if it came that way, or if it got broken by me when it's been moved from you know location to location on my bench um, and it's been moved around quite a bit so it's very possible that I did it um, I'd have to go back and look and see if I can find any pictures that I took and if it had it on there or not but either way we're got a broken claw so what I want to do is I want to try to repair this so I want to go ahead and work on that so Here's what I have in mind. The whole plan sounded pretty feasible when I was in the shower. Let's see if we can make it to come to fruition here. Hang on a second. All right, here's my idea. Whatever I do, I'm definitely gonna be using my two-part epoxy sculpt to form the new appendage, okay? But, I can't just take this and stick it on the tip of this and expect it to stay. So my idea is first I broke out the extra fine blades or bits should I say for my drill for my pin vise. Now I'm going to drill a hole into the edge the very tip of the claw. Okay. Sorry blocking it but so I got that. I'm going to drill this out and drill a hole. Surprisingly this is going very easy. Not as difficult as I thought. Alright. 
I tell you, fading eyesight here is really killing me. I'm having the world's hardest time. But anyway, so we drill a hole in the tip like that. Now, I got this little pin right here. What this is, is I was at work. Matter of fact, I was at work today and I happened to be going through the hospital and on the window ledge I found this cartridge. I couldn't tell what it was for at first. I picked it up, it was very hefty and I was looking at it and I realized what it was is a staple cartridge for our multifunction devices that we had throughout the hospital. I don't know where it belonged um, or anything like that so I ended up bringing it back with me and well, sticky fingers pit, it came home with me. And in it is all these staples of this really thin metal. So my goal is to drill this out, fit this into it. Let's see if I can get it. And then use the epoxy sculpt to form around it. And then hopefully that little brace that I make will act pretty much like a rebarb does when you make some when you put in cement pilings and stuff like that very rarely do you ever put cement in by itself you need something to hold it up and that's kind of what the rebarb does and on a very very tiny scale that's what I'm hoping that this will do so that is my plan so I gotta probably make the hole a little bit bigger but I'm gonna work on that now what I'm going to do is once I get the hole ready I need to prep this this is very smooth so in my mind's eye what I see happening is I'm going to scuff the hell out of this with some rough sandpaper I might take my file and really cut, gouge it and cut it now it might not seem much to us but on the the I won't say microscopic level but on the smaller level when I put the epoxy sculpt on here, it should bite in to those those rough ridges and help hold it in place. And then once that's in place, I'll be able to sculpt it and um, try to reform the claw. So that's what I'm trying to do. So give me a minute and I'll be right back. All right, so I was able to drill a pilot hole. I took the pin took the pin, I scuffed it up the best that I can for right now, and using Gorilla Glue, I put some glue on the pin and put it into the hole. Now I'm going to let that dry. I want that to get nice and, and hard and firm and stiff and <laughs> giggity. Um, and then when, once that is done, I'm going to just let it set overnight. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll scuff this up some more. Um, trim it down also because it doesn't need to be that big. Probably about take off about half of what that is. I don't know if we can see that. But take off about half of what it is. And then we'll mold up some epoxy sculpt and then we're going to try to create ourselves a new claw. If this works, I might do see if I can cross train over into the prosthetics lab over at my hospital. I might have myself a new calling. <laughs> anyway, uh, hang on and we'll be right back. All right, so the um, glue dried around the staple-like post that I put in there. Um, I was able to scuff it up a little bit. I used uh, the teeth on here and just kind of grabbed it and pinched it and pinched it. And then I trimmed it down maybe about a third an eighth of an inch maybe if that is sticking out of the claw then I took my epoxy sculpt I put it together the 50-50 mix and then I put it on the claw and I started forming it now once I had it close I started using my finger with some water always seems to work really well and it just kinda whoops, just kinda kept blending and blending it in I got relatively close to the shape I want right off the bat. Focus. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to set this aside and let it dry and then um, 
then we'll start working on it maybe tomorrow again I just wanted to get it good and hard hopefully it adheres to the uh, the resin itself I'm going to have to be very careful with it see what happens but uh, that looks damn it that looks um, pretty skippy so anyway till next time guys be strong